Welcome to Watercolor. My name is Elizabeth Merriman and I live here at the Redwoods and we are filming this in my apartment and uh, my apartment is not only my home but it's my kitchen, my studio, my desk, my everything and so I have some supplies for you to learn about today with watercolor and then we'll even experiment with them. So the first thing you need with watercolor is decent watercolor paper. The biggest mistake you can make with paper is trying to do watercolor on a regular sheet of printer paper because it'll all buckle. So watercolor paper is made differently than regular paper. First of all, it's thicker. Most of the watercolor paper I use, which is like this, with here some individual sheets, it's 140 pounds. And that means if they weighed 500 sheets of this, it would weigh Five, 140 pounds, so it's pretty thick. Let me show you. Here's just one piece, pretty thick. It's also different than regular paper because it has something, usually it's 100% cotton. The, the finer papers are 100% cotton. And then they're covered with something called sizing. And what sizing does is it prevents all the paint from just sopping into the paper right away. So you have more time to play with colors and mix them right on the paper. So there are different ways of getting watercolor paper. You could get individual sheets like this. I also, this is the kind of the Cadillac of watercolor papers. This is Arches 140 pound cold press paper. And this comes in something called a block. So this is glued together and you do your painting and when you're all done you can insert a knife or, or something letter opener and peel off and that's nice because then the paper doesn't curl up when it's wet you can also get watercolor paper in a book you can get it in a book that has a spiral binding like this and I have another book hiding under here this is my watercolor journal book I've been using this, well, actually, let's see, what number is this? This is number 34. I filled 34 books. This is the 34th. And what's nice about this paper is there's no spiral binding. So if you wanted to do a whole spread, you could go right around, right across the middle. Usually I do a half. So that's the paper. Now we'll move on to the paints. We talked about paper, and now we're going to talk about paints. And in the previous lesson, I suggested that you could invest in something called Prang, P-R-A-N-G, Prang paints. And this is a basic set of 16, let's see if I can get them open, 16 Prang paints. And that's a really good value for a bang for the buck. And they, all you need is in, in this container. And what I've done on the cover is I've made a, a chart so that I know what color it looks like on paper. You'll also see me when I'm doing painting work from this palette. This palette is about the same number of paints, but the, the paints come from these tubes. I have a lot of bags of these. <laughs> I won't show them all, but all the I've divided them up into five different colors. So all the reds are together, all the blues are together, all the greens are together. And I take the tube and I squish it in it, into each of these. The nice thing about watercolor is that you can have this dry for a long time. Like look at how dry this orange is. And all I need to do is squirt it with a little water or dampen it with a brush and it reconstitutes and you can work with it right away. Watercolor is safe to use. There's no toxicity in it. Uh, it has no odor. No, um, you don't need any alcohol or anything special to clean it up. So it's a really safe medium to use in your apartment. So this is my palette that I use at home, but I'm not always at home. So let me show you what I use when I travel. I have this little bag in my purse. And in this little bag is enough for me with the little book, with the little book that I was showing you before, for me to go out and do a page in my watercolor journal. So that's the big palette. Now I'm going to show you a little palette. 
here's a little palette. Now at home, I have two jars of water that I clean my brush between each color. But I don't have a jar, I can take a jar of water, and if I take a jar of water, I take an old, I think this was an old bouillon cube container. I've had it for about 20 years because it's plastic and it's lightweight and it closes well and it doesn't leak. But I can put water in that, but then I have something else to use also. I have a water brush. Now, for those of you that have not invested in a brush yet, this is an option for you. It has water here in the blue part. And so if I take my hand and squeeze, water will come out. Do you see the little bit of water? So like if I wanted, I'm gonna use a post-it note. <laughs> if I wanted to have something pink, I would just put the water brush in the pink and then I'd put it on the paper. And then, because I'm showing you all my tricks, I don't have a paper towel often and I'll just clean off my brush on an old sock. <laughs> I cut the top of an old athletic sock and so that's my cleaner. So that's my traveling set. So this is my at-home set and this is my traveling set. These are um, Cotman watercolors and Cotman is a student brand that's pretty good. They also can come in metal cases that are fancier. The, um, the reason I like the plastic over the metal is that it's not so heavy. It's very lightweight, and I can fit all of my toys together in this one container. So that is uh, all about the paints. Now we have one more thing to talk about, actually, too. We have brushes. And this is the brush that I recommended to you in our previous class. It's a Princeton Heritage brush, and this is a size eight. An eight is kind of a medium size. Uh, the larger the number, the larger the brush. So today, uh, or maybe in the next lesson, I'm gonna paint an apple that's pretty big and I'm gonna get a bigger brush because a common mistake people make is they use too small a brush for the subject. So there's the brush. So now we have everything we need. I also recommend that you have paper towels handy and my two jars of water. And the reason I have two jars of water is when I go from color to color, let's say I, I'm starting with a blue and I'm putting blue down and then I want to add some yellow to it. I want to clean the blue off completely and then rinse it before I get into the yellow. And that way, the blue from my palette doesn't go into the yellow, and I don't have a big, messy, dirty palette. So then I can add the yellow. I'll have to get myself a piece of watercolor paper for later. Okay, so that's, I think, all the materials that we need today. All right, now we're back again, and I'm going to show you how to make a blueprint of your palette, of your watercolors. The watercolor set you got has 16 colors. I showed you my set, which has about the same, but they're two colors. And what I do when I start a new journal, this is a new one, or has was a new one, is I always, my first page, sometimes you have a hard time saying, what will I paint, what will I do? Do I have to have a fancy title page? So what makes me feel more comfortable with my first page of any journal is I make a roadmap of my palette. So this is a roadmap of my palette. And if I hold the palette near, you can see I've made some changes. I've taken these two extra little boxes out. But pretty much I can, instead of looking at this and thinking, what in the world is that? I can look over here and say, oh, that's Payne's Gray. And I know, I know what Payne's Gray is and I know what it looks like on paper. And I can see what it looks like on paper. So what we're gonna do is we are going to make a roadmap of the Prang paints. Let me move this out of the way. And quite frankly, what I've already done, which I don't want to confuse you with, is I've done the top row already. So it's the bottom row we're interested in because the bottom row has, and we'll, we're going to do a color wheel next, uh, next lesson. 
The bottom row has our three primary colors and what we call the three secondary colors. And all you really need is eight colors. You need three of the primary and three of the secondary and then a couple of earth tones. So I have named them in, in the order in which they're located in the palette. So this is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. And brown and black are the two earth tones that I was going to tell you about. All right, so we get my water here, the dirty water and the clean water. And what I have found is I like to work from light to dark. If I'm going to be putting my brush in a lot of different colors, it's kind of harder to go from a dark violet to a yellow because you have to really clean your brush really well before you put it in the yellow. So I'm going to start with the lightest colors. Instead of going left to right, I'm going to choose. And the lightest color here is yellow. So I, I, when I get my brush wet, I kind of stroke it on the edge so that some of the extra water is out. And I want to get into the yellow. And I kept plenty of pigment. And I'm going to put the yellow in the circle. If you do this and it's not quite rich enough, just go get some more, get some more pigment. Watercolor is pigment and filler. The professional watercolors, like the ones I have in the tube, have more pigment and less filler. And the student grade colors have a little more filler. So sometimes you have to just be more um, demanding of your color and dig deeper to get what you need. So now I've got yellow and I'm going to move to the next lightest color, which I think is orange. So I'm going to rinse my brush and then rinse it again and take the extra water off. And here, here comes the orange. And I suggest that when you do this, you use a ro ruler and you set yourself up with eight, you know, eight squares and eight squares and get them all identified with ink before, oops, see, I can't talk and paint at the same time. So that's what we call a happy accident. And I can just put my paper towel, see, that's why you have a paper towel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and add a little more yellow because of my, oops. You can see I'm not perfect. All right. So we've got orange and yellow. Let's do the red next. This is kind of a cool, cooler red. You'd be interested in knowing in the pre three primary colors that there's a cool red and a warm red, and there's a cool yellow and a warm yellow, and a cool blue and a warm blue. But that's kind of lesson three. If we get that far, I'll I'll tell you about the differences when mixing. So now I've got bright red and I want to get into the green. So I want to make sure to get rid of all the red. You could also, besides doing this, you can also just put your brush sideways on the paper towel. So here comes our green. This looks like a nice dark green. Yeah, this is kind of, can you tell uh, in the camera, it's kind of a cool green. It's got some blue in it. It's not a yellow sap green. Here's our green. Dirty water, clean water, wipe, wipe, blot, and go into the blue. You can see in this lesson and also when I've painted before, if you've listened to the others, that I always kind of work from the tip and I pull it back towards me. Sometimes I do it upside down, but I if the tip touches the line and then I go into where it's broader and that way I'm, I'm, I can control the paint better. So now we're going to do violet. So you probably know that violet, ooh, this is a nice dark violet. Violet is a combination of red and blue. And 
to file it. And then brown, because brown um, is an earth tone, it, I have a bag of browns in that, in that container of my watercolor paints. There are so many browns when you think of earth, all the different colors of brown. So you can start with this basic brown and then you can make it more interesting by adding other colors if you want to. This is kind of a cooler brown. It doesn't have very much red in it. There's our brown, dirty water, clean water, swipe, swipe, and then black. I rarely use black. I make my own darks, but sometimes black is a good color just to add to another color, just to darken it a little bit. So here we have the basic eight, which is in one of your rows. It's in the row that's nearest to the hinge. There's the hinge. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. And we're going to wait for that to dry. And then I made a mistake in that. When I did this, I'm glad I'm doing another one. I t I'm, you know, so efficient. I taped it onto the, this. But then when I go to use the, the paints, I have to go like that to see what color they are. And that's silly because this is your mixing area. So when I get done with this, I'm going to cover this with something plastic or maybe um, packing tape that's clear like this. I just use packing tape. And I'm going to keep it separate so that I can prop it up and see it while I'm painting. So because we are limited on time, what I already did, which I'll show you now, is I did the top row. So the top row, the colors, oh here. That makes more sense. So white, red, violet, blue, violet, turquoise blue, blue green, yellow green, yellow orange, and red orange. So all of these colors are not pure. In other words, they're a mixture of at least two color, two other colors. And when you buy watercolors, traditionally, you do not get a white. Watercolor artists don't use white, and the reason being this. White is what's called an opaque color. It's like a gouache or a tempera color in that it doesn't allow the white of the paper to come through and show. And so usually when you paint, you just leave the white of the paper or you make it very light. But this, this, this has it, but just know that white is opaque. And one of the big differences between watercolor and acrylic is that acrylic is opaque, which is fine if that's what you want but we want what's called translucency. So now we have identified our praying paints and we're ready to go with our first project. Now we've talked a little bit about the colors in your palette. We're gonna make a very simple color wheel. For most of you, this information probably is not new, but there are three primary colors and three secondary colors. And what I've done is I've drawn in pencil uh, like a Star of David, a triangle that's uh, one way and then another triangle. And you can see, you can see the triangles here. And I'm going to put at the top of my color wheel yellow, because yellow, as I indicated, is a primary color. We're going to fill in this, and you're going to see the pencil through it, but that's okay. When you do this, you don't have to write the word down because you'll know. You'll have the cheat sheet to look at. I made a copy of this for everybody. If you go to the program's office, there'll be a color wheel for you so you can see how it's done. So there's yellow. So the next primary color I want to do is red. So I get the red, this red, because th these are the purer colors down here. And red is um, to the typically to the left on the wheel of yellow. And it's a warmer, it's a warmer color.
Remember what I said about student grade paints, there's not quite as much pigment in them as professional paints, but if you just keep dabbing, dabbing, you get what you want. So we're gonna do the third primary color, which is blue. So there's your three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. I'm going to just add a little bit more red to this. Okay, now you already know this, and I, but I'm just going to assume that we're starting from the beginning. So when you mix two primary colors together, you get what is called a secondary color. So yellow and blue make a green. And we could mix them ourselves on a little palette, but we're gonna go into the green and use this green. It's a nice light green. So yellow and blue equal green. 30 water, clean water, and then yellow and red equal orange. Now we have one more, and that's red and blue. And red and blue together create violet. of a deep purple. But... Now when I'm done with my brush, I do not leave it like that. If you leave your brush like that, brushes are really uh, beautifully made and they're made to hold, watercolor brushes surprisingly are made to hold a lot of water. So you want to scrape it off and leave it resting like this. When you're all done after it's dry, sometimes I put it on my paper towel, then I can put it in a, you know, a container with a brush up. But if you, if you forget and leave this in, in the water a lot, your bristles, will, they won't come to this. See what a nice point this comes to? It won't come to a nice point. So what I'm going to do now is take a pencil and connect the three so you can see better. Here's our primary colors, and the primary colors we're going to connect with a solid line. Can she draw a straight line? Kind of. There. Yellow, red, blue. Then the secondary colors we're going to connect with a dotted line because they come second to the primaries. I'm going to turn my book so that I can do this without getting my fingers in the paint. Now if you really want to get fancy, which I have done on the color chart that I'll share with you in a minute, you can mix some of these colors and get the, the, the third layer, which are called tertiary colors, but we're not going to go into that. This is what we're going to do in lesson one. You get yourself some colors, make a map of it. Don't tape it to the box like I did. Keep it separate so that when you open your palette, you can see what colors look like this. And then you can make a very simple color wheel. And this will help you understand. The colors on this side tend to be cooler and the colors on this side tend to be warmer. And we'll talk more about that next time. So have fun with your paints, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.